Hey YouTubers and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion video. Actually, it's a Dragon Ball discussion video. We're going way back to the very beginning. The very beginning. I have with me World King Kanji. Yes, that's right. I said it right this time. Anyway, guys, uh, uh, we're going to be talking... <laughs> I I'm really excited for this video. I'm just really excited for this video. We haven't even announced well, what they it saw is the yet, title. but the title will give it the away. <laughs> but, uh, uh, guys, we're going to be talking about whether, whether or not we go back and we uncovered the dark history, the darkest secret that Grandpa Gohan ever kept from Goku, Master Roshi, and everyone in Dragon Ball. Did Grandpa Gohan actually throw baby Goku into the ravine because baby Gohan, or Goku actually, was a little piece of shit who he couldn't control, so he just decided to get rid of this baby and didn't want to take care of him anymore. Kanji, what are your thoughts? Oh, where do I start? Okay, so we all know since the beginning of Dragon Ball, the karma has been a large sort of recurring theme that goes through the show. Even as late as Dragon Ball Super, with sort of like, you know, Frieza giving power to, to Goku and uh, trying to help him on uh, in the Tournament of Power because he did it on Namek. Well, we know that Goku killed Grandpa Gohan when he turned into the Great Ape, and he <laughs> knows that himself. But karma really does pay... So and you must be sort of there thinking like, you know, well, how did Grandpa Gohan deserve that? He was a nice guy, right? He found a baby in the forest and he sort of like took him in as his own sort of thing, decided to raise him. Look, we all know that kids can be a headache and that Goku was apparently a very difficult child. And just to clarify, we're talking about Toei Animation's iteration of the story and not Dragon, uh, Toriyama's Dragon Ball Minus version. But it was... <laughs> I mean, like, it's even been depicted that Goku was vicious because he bit him and all this kind of stuff when he was a kid. Um, and he messed up his bed, he threw his toys around, threw his toys at <laughs> Gohan, probably got through a load of nappies because we know how much Goku eats and all this kind of stuff. But I, it's, it's hard to tell. I don't even know if Grandpa Gohan's been a parent before. But I have several no. questions as to how he fell into the ravine. <laughs> And I really want us to just—I just really want us to pay attention to the first bit of evidence. And this is like this is coming up as a bit of like a court case kind of thing right now. But let's just <laughs> scroll like up to the picture that I sent you earlier, Mark, where Goku. Okay, I'll put it on yeah, the screen. Yeah, Goku is is apparently and allegedly falling into this ravine. But Grandpa Gohan is supposedly like trained with Master Roshi, and we all know how high Grandpa, uh, we all know how high Master Roshi can jump, and we can assume that Grandpa <laughs> Gohan trained with turtle shells. Goku is falling into this ravine, quite far into the middle, to suggest that he's actually fallen out of the basket on his back, <laughs> and Gohan doesn't see. <laughs> yeah, he's he's. He's quite far out there, actually, if you look at it. Like, <laughs> he, he just, like, somehow he just kind of wandered off this, but fell halfway across the distance <laughs> between the cliff and the ravine. And so, <laughs> Gohan hasn't tried by any great means to try and catch Goku. Instead, he's actually just kind of looking at him with his arms out. And Goku's expression on his face right now strongly suggests that he has been thrown rather than fell. Not to mention, <laughs> let's just look at the anim at the art right here. The the way that Goku has been drawn suggests that his tail and the wind and all this kind of stuff is that he's been thrown at some force to the left. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't what happens when you fall. And Goku's arms are spread out like he's tried to catch something or like he was gripping onto something and Gohan has ripped him away and thrown him into this ravine. <laughs> And we see in these other video, these other pictures that you showed me before we started recording this, that it's clearly in the same realm of like what was happening before he threw them, where Go Gohan was actually holding Goku up. <laughs> so maybe, maybe at this point, this is this is where he gets right up into Goku's face, and he's like, you know what, screw this kid, <laughs> and he just like walks over to the ravine and just throws with all of his force, and that's why he's not trying to catch Goku. We are seeing the aftermath of that throw like mid throw <laughs> and who's who, i mean like really amongst us who are we to kind of assume that what goku what we've been shown by toei animation and what goku remembers and all this kind of stuff is actually the truth i mean like it's easy to suppress memories but if we scroll down to this picture where gohan is like trying to help nurse goku back to health it look 
Gohan threw Goku into the ravine, realizing that he hadn't <laughs> done away with this trouble, or maybe kind of at this point, kind of going, actually, there is not much I can do to cover up this. He's picked him back up, taken him back, and gone, oh, I guess I should really try and nurse this kid back to health. He's picked up the bits of hair that fell off his head <laughs> and left them in the dish next to him. So that when, And this stuff... Okay, when Gohan heals the dinosaur, he describes the stuff that he molds out of the rolling pin with the, uh, with the leaves as like a pasty kind of substance. So rather than this be what he's trying to do to heal Goku, maybe he's actually doing it to try and glue his hair back to his head. <laughs> it doesn't work obviously because Goku has that freaking bald spot exactly where the bandages <laughs> are so that's where his hair is that's right that happened to come off when he fell into the ravine and got head injured and that's why he has that constant bald spot there where every other part of his hair is just completely wild that's that makes complete and perfect sense to me I mean okay question here is so, obviously, he gets kind of mad at this kid who's, like, really rambunctious and he can't really control. Like you said, this kid comes in and, and messes with his bed. That's a, that's unacceptable. <laughs> so, he throws him off a ravine but has a change of heart and decides to raise him. And then karma kind of strikes when the full moon comes out and Goku crushes him. <laughs> Go on. Uh, Goku <laughs> pretends that he doesn't remember. <laughs> but he remembers. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I mean, it. like... I, I just love there are this. more questions. I just love this picture. I just love this picture of him. Like, yeah, like when you look at the picture with Gohan, Goku falling and Gohan trying to save him with huge air quotes there, it just looks like if you look at it, he's being... <laughs> <laughs> look, I mean, the question that you brought up to me when I first pitched this idea to you was why was Gohan walking so close to the side of the ravine in the first place? <laughs> I mean, if you've got a baby in your backpack basket fashion or something like that, and you're walking through the woods, how does he slip out? Is it because Gohan's old and he didn't notice, and then Goku crawled and then just jumped? Maybe Goku wasn't happy living with Gohan. Maybe the reason he was such an angry kid was maybe the fact that Gohan was just not a suitable parent. <laughs> Goku's like... What if, like, go like, like, like logistically, like... After everything that we've seen in Dragon Ball and everything we've seen that Master Roshi could do at the very beginning of Dragon Ball, shouldn't shouldn't uh, Grandpa Gohan been able to actually go and catch him and be completely okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, the guy should be just as strong, if not as, uh, as stronger than Master Roshi at this point. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot of points that support that, especially considering <laughs> the fact that, like, you know, King Yama does some pretty uh, unfeasible sort of you know, the dude survives a burning castle that has been, like, the fires of hell and all this kind of stuff. And, like, you know, he's he's able to train with Master Roshi and he was training with Grandpa Gohan. Grandpa Gohan is so much older than King Yemma, it really suggests that... It was King Yemma. Oh, my God, I've said this, like, three times in a row. <laughs> the Ox King! <laughs> It's because it's I keep going to, um, I call him uh, Gumao, and like I've gone to call Yemma Enma and all this stuff, and I'll confuse myself. But look, the Ox King was training <laughs> with uh, Grandpa Gohan, and it suggests really that the Ox King, because he's so much younger than Grandpa Gohan, that he was probably being trained by Roshi on his own beforehand. So realistically, he should be able to do a lot more stuff than the Ox King can. And the Ox King can survive a burning castle and all this stuff that had the fires of hell. <laughs> And Gohan can't save a baby. Really? <laughs> you can't just jump after him after everything we've seen everyone do. Yeah, like, th I don't know, man. I think the, the evidence is really stacking up against Grandpa Gohan. He threw Goku in because he couldn't handle the kid being as, as rambunctious as he actually is. And that's what we've been seeing. And the Toei created flashbacks where Go Gohan just looked at Goku and he's like, you know what? Screw this kid. I can't control him. Into the ravine. <laughs> <laughs> into the ravine. <laughs> and into the ravine. <laughs> but, but, you know, I have more questions, and I want to know, like, you know, what Toei are trying to cover up, because if you look at some of these pictures, um, Gohan's backpack basket is actually a different color in this one where he's picking Goku up to the one where he's throwing him. Is this his throwing basket, and this is his saving basket? <laughs> are there other children in these baskets? <laughs> is, is he... <laughs> How many children have there been? <laughs> How many are there in this ravine? Is this where he takes them when he realizes he can't look after them? 
We never go back to it. We never go back to it unless you count the one where Go Gohan almost falls off at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, the filler. <laughs> like maybe that's the same ravine, and he just simply saves himself, and Goku finds him. But they never travel down to the very bottom where it's just covered in child corpses. And this has gotten so much darker. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> what we got? I mean, okay. Let, let's take it back to a, a more. I mean, it's always going to be a bit dark. We are suggesting he's tried to kill a child. But I mean, let's just kind of look. Go, Goku, when he grows up, like he's he's like for some reason decides to uh, put the turban on his head, and um, to reveal like his age, like you know, before they reveal like the fact that this is actually Goku. The thing that reveals that is that his that it's his hair underneath that. So everyone's like, oh my god, it's Goku! But what if this is actually Goku? Like you know, he doesn't really realize he's doing this. But if you look at the nappy that he's got, that his tail has somehow mm-hmm. managed to come through even though there's no hole. His tail has managed to come through this. <laughs> Grandpa Gohan has obviously got some experience in making nappies. Goku's learned how to do this, and Goku's made his turban out of the same stuff. This might suggest... This might suggest he went home to see, like, where he grew up and everything <laughs> beforehand, and then he had, like, a flashback, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to wrap this around my head. I'm just saying, because look, mm. at, look at the picture before as well. <laughs> Grandpa Gohan seems to have so many of these bandages laying around that it's almost quite suspicious that he has so much. Like, you know, if you went to a uh, to somebody's house and they had tons and tons and tons of drugs, you would have, you would include you, you would accuse them as peddling and like you know as trafficking. If he has this many bandages, what is he planning on doing with them? He's throwing kids off the ravine. <laughs> and I have another question as well. This one's far less suspicious, but I've just noticed it in this picture where he's holding up Goku and he's got like the brown basket on his back rather than like the deep red one. One of the one of the uh-huh. circles on his jacket are uncolored, and it's at the very bottom, and it really bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed? That? Why does that bother you? Because the rest of them are yellow, and that one's white, and it's kind of like is. I don't know, is this the one child that is going to survive the ravine? Does he draw another circle on his jacket for every child there's been? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he hadn't coloured this one in before Goku. That's terrible. <laughs> it's awful, but like... <laughs> the whole, Grandpa Gohan, like, you know, they often say if things sounds too good to be true, then it probably is, and maybe that's the story behind Grandpa Gohan. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And that's why he wears yeah, the mask that's... to cover his face from that point forward. <laughs> that's why he's forced to fight with uh uh that's why he's forced to fight in those tournaments with all of the terrible creatures hell? from classic monster movies. That's why he's in hell. Yeah, like, oh my he... god, it's not because he's He's always with the mm-hmm. Hellfires. He's with De- Akuman, Devil Man, he's with uh, Dracula Man, he's with the Mummy, and then later on Yeah, he's not a good person. He's not a good person. He's he's the worst of the worst. And then li- literally later then, like, on, when they go to try and put the fire out from Ox King's castle, and Grandpa Gohan just happens to be there. <laughs> it just happens to be in hell. And he's like, maybe he's trying to res- like put vengeance on the Ox King or something. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's why they brought back Frieza. Like we know that you know in Toriyama's original vision that the people who were the worst people didn't get to keep their bodies, but people like Goku and all the good people got to keep their bodies and get to they had the day pass and everything. But then they told us in Dragon Ball Super that Frieza got to keep his body, even though you know he's stuck in the cocoon or whatever. Yeah, he still gets to keep his body. He was the worst of the worst. Well, so is Grandpa Gohan, and that's why he got a day pass. <laughs> that's why like Frieza got a day pass. You look at it. Goku, Gohan, and Frieza, the only two, like only three who have gotten a day pass. Two of those people are evil. Yeah. And Goku, and Goku, there's been enough to suggest that Goku is so selfish that he actually is evil too. So yeah, I mean, this repaints Dragon Ball in a in a huge. It line. really does. You're completely right. And I mean, I, I, I just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> reveling on all of this kind of stuff. I mean, like, the, was was Grandpa Gohan like when he kind of. Goku got that close to the edge of the vein. Was he like Michael Jacksoning him? Like, you know, the way he did with Blanket when he dangles him over the side of the banister and drops him. And he's like, oh, he caught him. Michael Jackson at least did that. Whereas Grandpa Gohan just. <sighs> I, I'm just questioning so much of this stuff right now. Everything has changed, guys. Anyway, we're going to leave it at that. Tell us in the comment section what y'all believe. Do you think Grandpa Gohan 
got so fed up with Goku and all of his antics as a little baby that he actually threw him off the ravine instead of Goku just simply falling off and Grandpa Gohan for all of the strength and agility and everything that he should have considering his old students, his old, you know, training buddies and everything that we saw throughout Dragon Ball, should he been able to actually save Goku if he actually wanted to or tried? So he let this happen regardless of whether he... Wait, I've just, I've just realized time, something else. Just before we close this out, like, I think we know the reason he went and retrieved him from the ravine is because it was it was mentioned that uh, Gumao, uh, the Ark King, and Roshi were told that, he had, that he'd found a little boy. So maybe he threw him and then he went, oh, crap, no, I've told them. They're going to wonder what happened to him. Ah, damn it and so he went and pulled him back out of the ravine he's like well i better i better look after him then and then he he fed him the story he's like you know what the kid fell off the ravine and almost died but it was like whatever that was his thing he's like i'm just gonna tell him a story but then he realized that goku was actually and that's why go and that's why goku like stopped being evil it wasn't because he forgot his mission it's just he didn't want to cross gohan again (laughs) don't ever mess with me again you little crap and then he just like he's like all right i'm sorry (laughs) <laughs> anyway guys uh please go down to the description section below hit that link and go subscribe to world king kanji yes i'm saying kanji again because i like saying kanji i hope everyone's having a fantastic day don't forget to like comment and subscribe hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time i upload it's been real guys bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs>